My husband was a very hard-working person. He was extremely brave. He was not a coward. His profession was a driver. He was working as a bus driver, and then he found a job as a driver of a fire, fire, fire engine. So we lived together for six years, and he was constantly working as a driver in these six years. He was driving a fire engine for three years, and he loved this job a lot. So sometimes, not even in his working time, he went to extinguish, to put out fires. Um, as an example, I can tell the story of um, our neighbor's fire. He was once sitting at the table with his computer and he saw through the window that there was a fire in our neighbor's garage. So he went out, he hurried out to put out this fire and he took out his uh, fire engine from the garage and there was fuel inside, so he extinguished the fire and he saved the car and the garage and our neighbor was very grateful for that. He never refused anybody to accomplish their requests. He was a driver, he was a born driver. When the, somebody was needing a lift, he never refused them. So for people outside, he was very humane. And uh, as a family man, as a husband, he was very caring and loving. He was very dependable and reliable. He always gave his best to us, to his family. And now I feel very hard without him. But I'm very grateful to fate that two little children are left from him. He was recruited to the army on March the 29th and before leaving to Kiravagrat, where the military unit was situated. He told me that who will do it if not us? It's us who should do it. If everybody will hide and will be afraid, who will defend our motherland? We won't have um, any motherland left. Our Ukraine will be scattered. His daughter asks, is it a house or what? And her mother replies, yes, daughter, it's a tent they are living in. On October the 2nd, terrorists starting, started attacking them near the airport and they found themselves under the rain of bombshells. And then the second floor fell down on them and they found themselves under this pile of uh, building materials. And then they also continued throwing smoke bombs on them and uh, it was very smoky there. But then one of his fellow soldiers pulled him out of there and I'm very grateful to him for doing that. But there were burns on his face and uh, they and uh, they were trying to reanimate him, but it was late. So he told me that, um, you know, there are no bullets that could kill me. Don't worry for me. And you see the way it happened. He was not killed by a bullet. He was choked in smoke. On October the 9th, 2010, our long-awaited daughter was born and he helped me with her a lot. He was taking all kinds of care about her and helped me about the house. Our daughter is a very emotional girl and she loves fairy tales a lot. In January this year, our son was born and he is now 10 months old and he's a very cute little boy. But when he was two months old, his dad was recruited to the army. So our son was not growing up in the same way as our daughter was growing up because her, his dad was staying away. He um, nearly didn't see his son growing. 
Так, фінансовий стан є таким скрутним для, для моєї сім'ї. Утримувати двох дітей – це досить складно. При... Now she's four years old and she loves mommy reading fairy tales to her and loves completing puzzles. And her granny pampers her a lot with these games she loves. I love my husband so much and I think that he's a hero. But although he's not with us anymore, he will always live with us in our hearts, in our souls, and I will teach my children that heroes don't die. So he's living and he will keep living in our hearts always, forever. Thank you.